Hello there, you're watching Your Trades on ET Now. I am Snehi Shah. With me as always is Priyanka Uppal. And if you take a look at the markets, it's been rather range-bound today. We went it with the Nifty uh, around those 2500, uh, 150 levels, but comfortably above 25,100. It's been a rather lacklustre day of trade coming in for the Nifty at least. But if you take a look at the broader markets, they were the ones that were lending support to the markets today uh, and outperforming the benchmarks. Nifty mid-cap up four times of a percent. You had Nifty small cap rather that was outperforming all of the other benchmarks 1% higher on Nifty small cap as well. Sensex was uh, down two tenths of a percent in tandem with the Nifty. Nifty Bank however did well for itself. End of the day in the green almost a one tenth of a percent uh, uptick coming in on that front as well. Titan, LTI, Mindtree, Wipro, BPCL your top gainers on the Nifty. However, one of the top losers on the Nifty today was Reliance. Even after announcing that one is to one bonus issue, that stock has ended lower by almost one and a half percent in today's trading session. Sipla, Dr. Reddy's, Coal India, these are also stocks that did not do well in today's trade. However, a bunch of stocks did do well today, and that was on the back of some brokerage notes that we did see coming in. The likes of uh, Jeffries on Zomato giving the highest ever target price for Zomato, in fact, at uh, 340 rupees per share. So, Zomato did pretty well today. You had Chola Finance today, Goldman Sachs initiated by, uh, so that stock did well. However, Uno Minda slipped on the back of a brokerage note on the back of a downgrade coming in to a sell rating from uh, Kotak Institutional Equities as well. So, uh, Uno Minda is a stock that ended the day with cuts of 3%. So, uh, largely that is the action that we saw coming in from brokerages. You also had Chola Finance, Sinjin and AU Small Finance Bank that were in focus today on the back of brokerages. But, well, yes, one other stock to talk about today was Raymond Lifestyle. It made its debut today and in a short while, in a couple of minutes, it uh, tanked down to close in the lower circuit. So that uh, that is what Raymond Lifestyle was up to today. There you have it, 5% uh, lower continues to be in a lower circuit is where Raymond Lifestyle was. But other than this also, a bunch of stocks in focus. You had GIC, Prestige Estates, Kodesh Property, Sona, BLW. Uh, the last three on the back of uh, QIP. You also had some on the back of an auto win. Uh, Dilip Bilkon uh, did pretty well for itself on the back of an auto win. Singapore GRMs turned negative, but that did not have any impact on your OMCs. And well, uh, you had a, a whole host of stocks and sectors that did pretty well. But Priyanka, what were you spotting today? I'm spotting some of the subsectors which were doing really well. Mm -hmm. If you notice, uh, Snehi, Brooking uh, counters have been mm -hmm. on a tear from last mm -hmm. three, four days. In fact, today also you uh, talk. See stocks like GM Financials, Edelweiss, Eiffel Finance, MK, and in fact, uh, we've seen the moves coming in, the G uh, broking uh, counters. In fact, a lot of housing finance counters, LIC Housing Finance, GIC Housing Finance, and smaller PSU banks. If you look at uh, banks like Karnataka, C uh, City Union Bank, they were on a move from last two, three days. And a lot of lot uh, of uh, action we've seen in many of the capital goods counter, like especially like Suzlon, Edor Welding, even uh, stocks like Greaves Cotton, they have been on a move, and a couple of names coming in from chemical and fertilizer space. Uh, they were on a move. Uh, selective hotel counters were also on the move today. But then uh, to talk about other stocks, there was one sector, one complete space which was on a move because of following GRM. That was Singapore GRM which have fallen in. And we've seen an impact on the stocks uh, wherein, uh, because you know IOC, BPCL, HPCL, their uh, earnings uh, gets impacted uh, with the fall in GRMs. And uh, that's what we saw. In fact, Reliance was also under the pressure because of that. Then we have an exclusive coming in that government plans to build LNG bunkering facility at the mega ports and Gale would be uh, directly impacted here because Gale supplies the LNG to long route ships through bunkering facility. So these were the main highlights, corporate news and the buzzing stocks which were in, uh, move on the move today the whole day. But then let's get to the action on the index side that what is in for uh, the index traders as well as the uh, viewers who are eyeing the special trades, uh, uh, the specific stock trades. Kunal Potra joins in. Uh, Kunal is with us to talk about the index. Kunal, the, the way move we could see from the FNO space also and the way index was moving, it was looking like there is some sort of consolidation which would be there uh, for a couple of days. We've seen the second consecutive day where a lackluster trade and in fact now we've closed with the downward bias only. What do you have to say on the index? Uh, would you still hold your position, long positions with the whole, uh, trailing stop loss or you've changed your strategy here? So, uh, I think, you know, when we look at it uh, as compared to the global market front, then I think it was a very good recovery which the markets had seen from yesterday's low of around 25,000, uh, you know, uh, 5,100 for the Nifty coming back towards 25,000 to 50 mark at the start. Yes, we did not sustain because of the way the global markets are shaping up. So, uh, my sense is that looking at the near-term charts, the index is bound to get into a phase of consolidation. 
But then when you look at the market breadth, the market breadth is completely vibrant. And there are so many stocks in the market, uh, you know, within the uh, tier 2 markets, you know, the large cap, the tier 2 large cap names, the mid cap, small cap ones, where there is a lot of price action, volume action, uh, you know, being seen. So I think, you know, the traders are looking at the indices getting into a range consolidation. Unless we break down about critical supports, the first critical support for the Nifty is at 25,000 mark on closing basis. So we've managed to just have a maybe a touch and go moment towards the 25,050 mark. But if you break below the 25,000 mark and close below those levels, assuming if the global market front becomes a lot more negative, then I think it could be time where traders could start unwinding positions. But till then, hold on to long positions. Okay, so hold on to the long positions is the call coming in. Uh, but Kunal, on that note, uh, what stocks are you flagging off for our viewers today given the kind of moves we are seeing in the market? So I'll go with uh, two buy calls and two uh, you know, fresh buy calls. The first one is about GMR Infra. The stock is making a comeback. Uh, it's now very close towards a breakout of its previous uh, you know, swing highs as well as a 50-day moving average. So would suggest a target of 100. Stop loss could be kept at 92. And Bosch is uh, the other stock which has made a very strong comeback. So after a mild correction and then a price-wise consolidation at the 33,000, 32,000 mark, the stock is making a very strong comeback. Uh, today, the stock has seen very good volumes as well. So which means that we could be, we could be looking at a turnaround for the stock in the near-term charts. So buy with a target of 34,500. Stop us at 32,800. All right. So JMR Infra, target of 100. And Bosch Limited, uh, target of 34,500. That's stop loss. That are two trades what Kunal is recommending at this point. Thanks very much, Kunal, for both the trades. Moving on, now Srishi joins us uh, to highlight two of the stocks that she's, uh, so, uh, she's found on the technical charts. Uh, Srishti, tell us which stocks have you spotted. So two counters, both on the breakout side. Firstly, let's have a look at um, one of the counters that is related to the paint segment and that is Berger Paints because uh, what we have seen is that the stock has been showing momentum uh, off late and the stock actually managed to move uh, in a rounding bottom fashion. Other than that, if we look at the counter, the stock is seen to be trading above its all key moving averages. Moving on to the next counter then and um, the next stock that we wish to highlight um, uh, is... Uh, uh, on the other side, uh, that's actually from the oil and gas space. Uh, but apart from that, it's Ember Enterprise as well. A lot of these counters were seen to be buzzing. Ember Enterprise as such is seen a good move. If we talk about the stock, the stock is seen to be crossing its resistance of 4,700 rupees and is now trading above its all key moving averages. So these are the two stocks on the breakout side. Back to you. Thank you so much for spotting uh, both of those stocks on the charts for us, CoForge as well as Amber Enterprises. But with that, it's time to slip into the word from the wise segment. And today, that happens to be Sandeep Tandon of Coins Mutual Fund. He believes the long-term bull market in PSUs is not over yet. Let's go across and listen into what else he had to say on this space. We are in decisive bull run. Maybe this decade belongs to us. Half century belongs to us. But you have to keep in mind that easy phase of bull run is over. But we are still in bull run and we are in difficult phase. This is a standard statement I generally give perspective to explain. Within the same logic, now get extended to other space. Let's say globally, we believe value as a thesis will, will be a biggest outlier and Japan is the biggest uh, uh, value theme which has played out. And what is very important to understand that all PSUs are part of value thesis. So we remain constructive if I have a decadal view. But if I have a very short term view or horizon when we say when we spotted that is a mild risk of period and I have to reconstruct, I will change. But if market corrects for whatever reason or becomes more volatile, which at least our volatility is very important. And if we do get some opportunity, we will participate in rebuilding these exposure. So from a structure perspective, longer term perspective, we remain very constructive. But from a very near term perspective, we are slightly cautious in this space because given the high beta, and we have moved towards low beta. All right, uh, that was Sandeep Tandon. And uh, Sandeep Tandon, let's not forget, he was the one who started talking about the PSU space much before, much ahead of uh, even world started talking about it. Talking about uh, crude now, crude conundrum continues as Brent stays below $75 per barrel and US WTI falls below $70. What does this mean and will this trend continue further also? Kunal has some charts to analyze the trend for us. Kunal, over to you. What's interesting is that we spoke about volatility coming back in the global market. The volatility in the global market has had an impact on the way how crude prices have moved. But interestingly, even though crude has gone through this real downward spiral, 
we've not seen a very sharpish kind of an sell off actually happening in metals a point which kunal was actually flagging up but kunal now is of the view that it's time to say goodbye crude for some time yeah yeah i mean goodbye crude is the word not goodbye crude but i think uh, you know what we've seen nikunches over the last one and a half or year you know remember there was this point in 2022 to 23 when crude had hit 125 130 dollars per barrel mark brent crude from there what we saw was an immediate cool off uh it came sub 100 but then from those 100 levels to sub 100 levels it's been consistently making lower tops so in technical parlance there was a weakish trend which started off for crude oil prices now this weak trend is actually uh you know trying to threaten itself to get into a multi year breakout so we've already gone through a yearly breakout crude is already at a 2024 low but we are now at the verge of breaking below major support of 69 to 70 dollars on the brent crude If that happens, we could be looking at another 10 point to 15 point drop on the crude prices. 10 to 15 point drop. That means the what we're at 70, 72.72. Yeah. So let's use 70 as a benchmark. So Correct. crude in this correction could actually retest 60 or thereabouts. 60 or thereabouts could be very much possible for crude oil, and that's why you've seen that many of the crude, uh, you know, benefit crude uh, the stocks which benefit when crude falls, the paint stocks, etc. Many of these stocks they've already started to seep in. this correction in the crude oil prices and many of these stocks are come back into a multi month multi week breakout after months of consolidation okay so kunal do you see this happening quickly or this could be like a pro- prolonged s- s- slow and a gradual decline this could be a very slow and a gradual decline so what happens is when an asset class gets into a corrective phase the manner in which it enters into a correction is how the the asset class goes and completes the corrective wave so which means as i said that in the last one and a half years crude oil price first went into a sharp correction then from those 100 to 80 or 75 it took a lot of time it took at least another 9 months to 10 months which means even if it falls by say 8 to 10 dollars it may not be a sharp fall it should be a very gradual kind of a cool off it should happen to the crude price kunal is of the view that hard commodities or industrial commodities as we call them copper zinc nickel and they may not fall but crude according to kunal even though the selling has been quite acute 80 is now been replaced by 70s uh, he feels that it really could be 60s 60s by the time crude actually stabilizes and crude goes down that acts as a back support for india as always right very interesting analysis by nikunj and kunal thank you so much but on that note we'll slip into a very short break on this edition of your trades more to talk about on the other side Welcome back. You're watching uh, ET Now. Uh, you're watching your trades on ET Now, and now patron from Derivative Diaries. Because of course, there's a we are uh, uh, seeing some consolidation on the index level also. Let's get you the cues from the uh, FNO side also that how was the trend looking like uh, for ex- September expiry? There's a flat trend which is appearing on the Nifty, whereas on Bank Nifty there was some sign, uh, some uh, sort of resilience. Uh, there was a shortcoming trend. Wix has cooled off a little. In fact, uh, it has uh, changed a little from yesterday. Now it's at 14.2. The most active calls for uh, September expiry was twenty five thousand two hundred, twenty five thousand three hundred, and the maximum call writing action, which happens to be its resistance, also is at twenty five thousand three hundred now. And the support, immediate support, which index can find it out at, is that uh, strikes off twenty five thousand. That's where the maximum of the put writing happens. So we have actually spent some time here. It's been two days. Let's see. The trend is not yet very encouraging for uh, us to move further, at least on the index side. It's a complete stock-specific market, uh, Snehi. Mm, absolutely, like? looking rather range-bound. In fact, twenty-five, three hundred on the upside, and twenty-five thousand on the support. But uh, let's also shift focus and talk about. Uh, Uh, the oil and gas space today because the singapore grms have turned negative for the first time since october 2022 so now what does this mean for omc's going ahead what does the recent slide in crude prices mean for marketing margins because if you take a look at these omc's only oil india was affected today down 4% hpcl bpcl and chennai petro in fact were trading in the green so let's just go across to somit and make sense of what this development could mean for all of these uh, omc's Singapore gross refining margin, which is the Asian benchmark of a gross refining margin for the companies, and uh, GRM usually means uh, what a uh, oil marketing company earns from uh, processing every barrel of crude into a final product. Now, this product, uh, this margin, that is Singapore gross refining margin, has turned negative 0.3 dollar per barrel, which means that uh, oil marketing companies are now running, uh, earning. and uh, are into losses by processing every barrel of crude into a final product and this has turned negative for the first time uh, 
since October 2022. Now, this could have been turned negative on the back of lower demand coming in for the final products like petrol, diesel and ATF uh, because of the slowdown that we have been seeing in China. That could have led to this uh, negative uh, Singapore gross refining margin uh, currently. Now, how will it impact the uh, oil refining companies? Now, generally, every per barrel drop in the GRM impacts MRPLs, EBITDA by nearly 1,000 odd crore rupees. It lowers Chennai Petro. Chennai Petroleum's uh, EPS by around 30 odd percent and for uh, Indian Oil Corporation, BPCL, HPCL, it lowers their uh, in, uh, earnings by around 14 to 16 odd percent and for Lance Industries, on a consolidated basis, it impacts their earnings by nearly 4 to 5 odd percent. However, nothing's all that bad for the oil marketing companies given the fact that we have seen a sharp drop in crude oil prices and this drop in crude oil prices increases the marketing margin uh, for, uh, uh, for the oil marketing companies and currently they are earning around 11.6 rupees per litre on petrol and nearly 9 rupees per litre on diesel and this will definitely boost the overall profitability of the oil marketing companies because generally when uh, uh, margins increase by around 0.5 litre per, uh, rupees per litre then the uh, EBITDA of uh, oil marketing companies increases anywhere between 7 to 11 odd percent. So keep an eye out for OMCs in trade. That's what the marketing margins gets impacted with the falling GRM. That's what Somit was indicating. Thanks very much, Somit. Moving on, let's get you two uh, stories on the, from the financial space, bank as well as NBFC, and where the brokerage notes, the impact of the brokerage note was resulting in a good stock movement. Uh, we're talking about two stocks, Chola Finance and AU Small Finance Bank. Uh, both got a brokerage upgrade. Uh, uh, Chola Finance uh, got a Goldman Sachs initiated a coverage on uh, Chola Finance. And they've spoken about they've initiated with a buy rating target they've given is 1786. And they talk about that, that the stock is uh, gaining market share uh, amid the retail upcycle and they've seen that the structurally better earnings that's the growth story that the brokerage sees and they've seen an EPS CAGR of around about 33 percent they expect over the period of FI24 and FI27. Whereas uh, talking about AU Small Finance Bank, uh, Goldman Sachs, they have also initiated a buy rating on the stock and they've spoken about that, that there's a valuation re-rating and opportunity lies for because of the better earnings right now. The target they've given is 831. They talk about that the stock de-rating that's largely run and the drivers in place for re-rating could be uh, EPS growth could be there could be 27% of CAGR over FY24 to FY27 on the better ROI as well as uh, the stock is relatively better placed this cycle. So two of the stocks which reacted on the brokerage note as well. Okay, so two uh, brokerage reactions coming in, but we also have Gaurav joining us with a list of other stocks that were in focus on the back of individual news flow. Gaurav. Well, yes. First, let's talk about Alemic Pharma because this company is in focus and the reason being that the company has received US FDA approval for the drug called albendazole tablets. And now with this drug, company has almost 214 ANDA approvals and as a result, we saw the stock was soaring today. Next, let's talk about Glenmark Pharma because company has now settled, signed a settlement agreement with US Department of Justice and according to this, company has to pay around $25 million in six installments over the next five years. And on closing this settlement agreement, now the stock is up almost a percent. Next, let's talk about Dilip Bilkon because this company emerged as an L1 bidder for an EPC project for building a tunnel in Kerala and the value of this project is going to be around 1341 crore rupees. This project is supposed to be completed in 48 months and as a result, we saw some uptick in the stock price today. Next, let's talk about Prestige Estates because company closed its QIP and allocated almost 3 crore shares but the problem is that the issue price of the QIP came up at 1674 rupees which was almost at a discount of 4.5 percent to its floor price and as a result we saw some pressure building up in this counter. Lastly, let's also watch out for AU Small Finance Bank because Goldman Sachs initiated with buy rating and a target price of 831. What they believe is that they are actually forecasting EPS growth of around 27% over the next two years because they believe that the stock de-rating has happened already and there are multiple levers for the stock to outperform in the coming quarters and that is the reason why we saw some in the stock price as well. So definitely watching out on all these counters on the back of the note as well as the news flow which has come today. All right, thanks very much, uh, Gaurav, for all that uh, list of stocks that were buzzing in trade today. Now, talking about the Raymonds, uh, shares of Raymond Lifestyle, that's the demerged lifestyle entity of Raymond. That got listed today at 3,000 rupees per share. The lifestyle business of Raymonds will house all apparel-related businesses of the group. In an exclusive chat with ET Now, Gautam Singhania also shared details about the demerger pipeline. Uh, also, he spoke about the demerger pipeline for the, for the reality business. Let's listen in what exactly he said. 
It's a pure play company now, and I think it'll have its own governance, own structures, own growth plans, own management team. So I think it's a huge advantage of a pure play company. And what's the feeling like with Raymond's lifestyle now listed? And I mean, this was a very long exercise for you with the demerger. It's a great feeling. Um, now from here, it can only go up. It's listed reasonably well. So from here, we're looking at the way journey up. Uh, in terms of the uh, Bangladesh situation and also the impact on the global garment outsourcing, uh, what opportunities do you see for Raymond due to that? So I think uh, the Bangladesh opportunity is a great opportunity for us. And moving forward, uh, we're going to capitalize on that. Uh, in terms of Raymond Limited, the engineering uh, business will remain under Raymond Limited. Uh, how are you looking to leverage the position of Raymond Limited? And what are the new areas Raymond Limited could get into in the future? Well, Raymond Limited will get demerged next year. Uh, it will have a lifestyle business, an engineering, a real estate business and an engineering business. And uh, from there, we'll create further shareholder value. Uh, what's the timeline for listing the realty business? It should be 9 to 12 months. All right, well, that's the word coming in from the management at Raymond. But on that note, we're completely timed out on this edition of Your Trades. Thank you so much for watching.